Although they were nowhere near the size of the Senate Bill 5 rallies, union protesters returned to the State House this week. Supporters and opponents of so-called right-to-work bills made their arguments to legislative committees. Supporters argue workers should not be forced to join unions or pay dues. Opponents argue those dues or fairness payments lift up all workers. Okay, why should you have to join um, a Rotary Club once a union? It's a condition of employment. It's not, uh, it's not, to me, it's not freedom that's un American. So I think we need to fix that. But regardless of whether they choose to or not, we are responsible for them. We're responsible for negotiating for them. And we're responsible to represent them in disciplinary hearings and grievance hearings. So they would have still have full rights of any other dues paying member. Dr. Kent, is this a one day run for this bill? Is this legislation going to go anywhere? Well, we're told that it is. The legislative leaders say, you know, there's, there's, there's no action coming on this bill, that this was one hearing and that's it. Um, and uh, President, uh, Senate President Keith Faber said the only thing that continuing this debate does is uh, result in breathless Democratic fundraisers, and he's probably right about that. Um, on the other hand, the, the Democrats try to make the point that um, they have to be vigilant, that you don't know when fortunes could change or when this could pop up. And part of what they point to is what happened in Michigan. Uh, Indiana passed the uh, a right to work law early last year. And in Michigan, the, the governor there, uh, Republican Rick Snyder, was saying things pretty much along the lines of what Governor Kasich was saying here, that it wasn't part of his agenda. He didn't really want to pursue it. It was too divisive. And then in a lame duck session at the end of last year, Michigan went ahead and passed a right to work law saying they had to do it because Indiana did it. So uh, at least it's, there's at least a possibility it could still come back at some point. So I'm sure it's still going to be talked about. So if, if, if a lot of Republicans in the state house support this, polls show that, you know, at least on at, at first blush, voters seem to like right to work. Why not push it forward now? Is it because they don't want it to become an issue for 2014 after what happened with Senate Bill 5? Yeah, I, I just see no desire on the part of the governor, the speaker of the house, or the Senate president to want to even deal with this issue. I think Senate Bill 5 was more than enough for them to deal with um, in, you know, earlier in this session, and I don't think they really want to bring something like this on. Um, I don't get any sense that they want to deal with it uh, at this time, which, you know, they gave it a hearing and, and it was introduced and they gave it a hearing, but I, you know, I'd be surprised if they do much more than that. Democrats disappointed, Jeanetta, that it's not going to be fought? Well, I don't think anybody's disappointed that the legislation is not going anywhere, but we do have to remember that there is another right to work initiative and that's through the ballot. And so I don't think anybody is, um, you know, sighing relief right now because that is a, a very real um, ballot initiative that could be on the ballot in, in 2014. So I think either way, even if it's not legislation, there will be a right to work fight coming into Ohio. And I think that politically, you have the Republicans have to ask themselves, yes, some of the, like you said, some of the poll numbers seem to show some support for this. The, certainly a majority of the legislature supports it in, because of the Republican control. But at the same time, how many of those voters are going to vote for you because you voted for right to work, but how many are going to vote against you because you voted for right to work? Uh, I think you're going to find a lot more who will vote against you or you will be pounded a lot harder for your vote. Uh, for this then you would be beneficial you get the benefit of a vote for this I think it's a similar argument to the gun issue yeah. uh, in terms of you know a vote a vote for gun control uh, may may win you may get you the popular vote but it, but you're going to catch more backlash from it which is why it often doesn't happen and we should keep our eye on Michigan and in, in terms of um, that that type of popularity for the governor who as Mark said you know decided to go ahead and support right to work some of the initial polling is coming out and he's already trailing uh, the, the Democratic nominee. And so I think that there could be uh, an impact at the ballot box. Bob, what's the better argument? We heard the arguments yeah. there. Um, fairness for workers that they shouldn't have to join the union if, mm -hmm. if they don't want to. They shouldn't have to pay the dues if they don't want to. Or is the better argument, we're competing with Indiana and Michigan now. They are both, quote, right to work states. That's, we have to join them. Which is, which is the better argument? Well, I don't know if one is necessarily better than the other. I mean, there are two valid arguments. One is, you know, should you be forced to pay union dues? Um, you know, and the union members come back and say, yeah, you know, they receive the benefits they should. Um, on the economic development side of things, I think we have to wait a little bit longer uh, to see how this all uh, pans out, both in Indiana and Michigan. Both of them haven't been right to work states long enough, I think, yet to to make that argument, but I'm, you know, it very well could be made down the road one, once we see how it turns out. But Oklahoma has been right to work, Mark, for about 10 years. You talk to folks there, they say we haven't really seen a huge difference either way. 
So the jury is still out, even for states that have had it for a long time. Yeah, and you talk to talk to you know companies and, and people who make decisions about where businesses locate or expand, and you know the be all end all is not right to work. There's a myriad of factors that go into where a company decides to go, and you know this could be a element or on the margins make a difference, but. Um, it, it doesn't stop, you know, folks from saying it matters. Though, if, if you talk to Mitch Daniels, the former governor of Indiana, he'll go on and on about how, you know, he's getting all kinds of people coming to Indiana or interested in Indiana because of right to work. And I don't think you can use either argument. First of all, we can't say that currently in Ohio or anywhere anyone's forced to join a union. That's just not true. You're well, not have forced. The they have to pay the dues. But this is not to protect people from from joining unions. And then two, I think the research, when you look at it, it's it's not conclusive. And in fact, we see that lower wages happen in right to work states, unsafe working conditions, you know, a lot of things that I don't think Ohio aspires to to be a higher um, uninsured rates. People don't have pensions. So, you know, th if that's where we're going, I think people will have a lot of concern and those arguments won't work.